Abstinence makes the heart grow fonder, or so says the movement's new spokesperson. And the guy who turned her into an unwed teenage mother, he's not buying the soft soap anymore. Her number one story, introducing Ambassador Bristol Palin. Ms. Palin making the rounds of the morning talk shows, discussing her new role as spokesperson for the Candies Foundation, an organization committed to preventing teen pregnancy through abstinence, maintaining if she had to do it all over again, she would not do it. Regardless of what I did personally, I just... I just think that abstinence is the only way that you can effectively 100% foolproof way to prevent pregnancy. So how do you bridge the two for kids? You say, don't do it, don't have the sex, but you did. So how do you put those two together? Um, I'm not quite sure. Just I just want to go out there and just promote abstinence and just say this is the safest choice. This is the choice that's going to prevent teen pregnancy and present a, prevent a lot of heartache. With son Trip and father Todd in tow, Ms. Palin called her baby the love of my life and a blessing, but also stressed that teen motherhood is hard work. As for mentioning that abstinence was not realistic during a previous interview with Fixed News, Ms. Palin said that comment was taken out of context. Someone should have forwarded those uh, talking points to Tripp's father, Levi Johnston, who also appeared on the TV this morning, perhaps positioning himself and his ex to become the Carville and Matlin of the teen abstinence movement, only without the married part. Abstinence is a great idea, but I also think that uh, you need to enforce, you know, condoms and you know, birth control and other things like that to have safe sex. I don't think just uh, telling young kids uh, you can't have sex is just—it's not going to work. It's not real realistic. Joining me now, the man announced today as the host of his own program from 9 to 11 Eastern each morning here on MSNBC, Dylan Radigan. Welcome. Good afternoon and good evening to you, sir. It's going to be a long day already, it's, I can tell, yeah. <laughs> for you in the morning. I want to talk about, about your show and what you're going to do yeah. with it in a moment, but let's, let's talk about this sure. sort of bizarre mix. I doubt that, uh, I, 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 I don't doubt Bristol Palin's sincerity here. But doesn't the do as I uh, don't do as I say or do as I say don't uh, don't do as I do thing? Does that not work only if there's some significant coverage of it with a pound of contrition? It doesn't sound like she's there's no yeah, there's no question about it. The thing that really stands out to me with this because the hypocrisy is obvious. Yeah. It's as, it's as obvious as a, as a, a closeted gay senator voting against gay marriage. Mm -hmm. there, there's a prevalence in in politics of this type of behavior. Unfortunately, we, that's why conversations like the one we're now having exist. More troubling to me than everything that you've already pointed out, or additionally troubling to me, mm -hmm. is it, this as an indication of the agenda inside the Republican Party right now at a time when we're suffering such a systemic breakdown in health care, in our energy. I don't, you know those things. Mm -hmm. And everybody in America knows those things. What's lost on me is why the Republicans who own the platform for wasteful spending in America mm -hmm. instead harken back three, four, five years ago for some polarizing social issue that they think they can create some sort of momentum around when it is clear to the folks in Kansas who want to be with the Republicans that the Republicans, beyond perhaps gay marriage or an advocacy against teen pregnancy, which last I checked is a 90-10 issue, <laughs> they have yet to step up to the obvious, which is our systems in America are failing. Let us address the issue of the wasteful trillions sure. that are pumping through the U.S. So what government. do you so what do you think this is then? Do you think this is a, I think it's a bad strategy? But, but but is it a bad strategy to that's designed to appeal to somebody they're overestimating in terms of how big the crowd is, or is mm -hmm. it a diversion to say pay attention to this nonsense because we don't have any clue what to do? I think it's more the last than anything else, no. and I think ultimately what it is is a fear. You have a party that aligned itself with a very powerful community in the in the business community. Many of those constituents, unfortunately, were advocates of a system. That that has brought this country to a very difficult situation. By the way, there are lots of that, that's a two-party issue. I don't mm -hmm. that doesn't lay squarely at the hands of the Republicans. But the Republicans, remember, began the process of trying to deal with the crisis in America in general. Cars, banks, we'll get to health care, and at the same time, now have no concept how to proceed. So they continue to refer to their 2005 playbook and say, "Okay, we win on social issues." So they keep trying to play a social issues card when wasteful spending is wide open to them. And I don't know why they don't take that. Would this stuff with the Bristol Palin have worked if, when asked uh, about the uh, how does this exactly work, how does abstinence actually impact it, if she had something to how say? How does other abstinence than, work? You know, Excuse well, me. I, 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 you know, how does it impact I, this? Yeah. 
uh, if she had said something other than I don't know. Yeah, you would think that if you're when, they, when the, before you do the rollout on the Today Show and <laughs> Good Morning America that when you do your talking points, but but. Honestly, in fairness to Bristol Palin, I, I did a lot of stupid things when I was 17 or 18 years old. I don't think it's fair for you, me, or anybody else to say, oh, well, what is, what's Bristol Palin doing out there advocating this? That's not the question. The question is, what is the Republican Party thinking presenting this young woman? who has enough to deal with, well, with her obvious structure of her life, and to me it's an indication they don't know what to do. Well, things went so well with her mother, so they're lining yeah. up the next one now. All right, so now, yes. Bristol Palin is not going to be your topic every morning, but obviously Most you're mornings. going, you are, you're going beyond I your, do have two hours. your comfort, your previous comfort no, zone of all. Sure. This is not a money show. Yeah, it's not at this. all. Tell me about I it. I mean, well, think about the principles that drive the type of journalism that I was just doing, yep. which is, again, interrogating private enterprise as to how they're managing private enterprises to be the most efficient and supportive and customer-driven. Mm -hmm. Basically take care of the people that they try to make money off of. Okay. I'd like to apply a, effectively that same line of questioning to the policy universe, because I feel like we're at a point in time in America where we got a lot of back and forth about and bl who's blaming who, but we don't have a lot of conversation or enough conversation about how it is that we get back to the business of arguing about gay marriage and teen pregnancy, but we can't do that until we deal with health care, energy, defense. And those are not political issues, those are systemic issues that everybody in America needs to, and wants to deal with them and invite folks.